Speedometer readings for a vehicle in motion at 14 second intervals are given in the table below. And I've also sketched the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane shown here on the right. If you were to sketch a function containing all seven points, it might look something like this. And since distance is equal to rate times time, the area under this curve over this time interval is equal to the distance traveled. And we're asked to estimate the distance traveled by the vehicle during this 84 second period using L sub 6, R sub 6, and M sub 3. Where L sub 6 indicates to use six subintervals, which would have a width of 14 seconds, and then use the left end points to determine the heights of six rectangles to approximate the area under the curve. R sub 6 indicates to use six subintervals, but then use the right end points for the height of the rectangles, and M sub 3 indicates to use three subintervals and use the midpoints as the height of the rectangles. So let's estimate the distance using L sub 6 or the left end points with six subintervals. Let's begin by marking off the six subintervals, which would have a width of 14 units or 14 seconds. And now let's determine the height of each of the six rectangles using the left endpoint of each subinterval. So notice for this first subinterval, the left endpoint has a y value of zero, and therefore the height of the first rectangle is zero. For the second subinterval, the point on the left has a y coordinate of six, and therefore the height of the second rectangle is six. For the third subinterval, on the left the point has a y value of 22, and therefore the height of the rectangle is 22. For the fourth subinterval, the point on the left has a y value of 40, and therefore the height of the rectangle is 40. For the fifth subinterval, the point on the left has a y value of 51, and therefore the height is 51. And then for the sixth interval, the point on the left has a y value of 49, the height of the sixth rectangle is 49. And now let's find the sum of these areas. Each rectangle has an area equal to the width times the height. And notice each width is 14, which means L sub six is equal to, for the first rectangle, the area is equal to 14 times zero. For the second rectangle, the area is equal to 14 times six. For the third rectangle, the area is 14 times 22. Again, remember we are using the Y values of the point on the left to determine the heights of the rectangles. For the fourth rectangle, the area is 14 times 40. For the fifth rectangle, the area is 14 times 51. And for the sixth rectangle, the area is 14 times 49. If we wanted to, we could factor out the common factor of 14 which gives us L sub six is equal to 14 times the sum of zero, six, 22, 40, 51, and 49. This might make it a little bit easier to enter into the calculator. Which gives us 2,352. So using the left end points and six subintervals, the approximate distance would be 2,352 feet since the velocity is in feet per second. And now we'll do the same thing using the right end points. So looking at the first subinterval, we now use the point on the right for the height, and therefore the height of the first rectangle is six. For the second subinterval, the point on the right has a y value of 22, and therefore the height of the second rectangle is 22. For the third subinterval, the point on the right has a y value of 40, and therefore the height of the rectangle is 40. For the fourth rectangle, the point on the right has a y value of 51, the height of the rectangle is 51. For the fifth subinterval, the point on the right has a y value of 49, the height is 49. And for the sixth rectangle, the point on the right has a y value of 36, the height is 36. So once again, using the right end points, we use the y values of the points on the right to determine the heights. We have a height of six, 22, 40, 51, 49, and 36, which means R sub six is equal to 
the first area, which is 14 times 6, plus the second area, which is 14 times 22, plus the third area, which is equal to 14 times 40, plus the fourth area, which is equal to 14 times 51, plus the fifth area, which is equal to 14 times 49, plus the sixth area, which is equal to 14 times 36. And if we wanted to, we could factor out the common factor of 14, r sub 6 is equal to 14 times the sum of 6, 22, 40, 51, 49, and 36. Going back to the calculator, we have an area of 2,856. which means using the right end points and six subintervals, the distance would be approximately 2,856 feet. And then for the third part, we're asked to use three subintervals and the midpoint. So I've already marked off the three subintervals, and now we determine the height of the rectangles using the y value of the midpoints. So looking at the first subinterval, we'll notice how the width is now 28 seconds. The point in the middle has a y value of 6, and therefore the height of the first rectangle is 6. For the second subinterval, the point in the middle has a y value of 40, the height of the second rectangle is 40. And for the third subinterval, the point in the middle has a y value of 49, and therefore the height of the third rectangle is 49. m sub 3 is equal to the sum of the areas of the three rectangles where the first rectangle has an area equal to the width times the height, which is 28 times 6. Again, notice how the width is 28 now, because we only have three subintervals. Plus the area of the second rectangle, which is 28 times 40. Plus the area of the third rectangle, which is 28 times 49. And once again, we're using the y values, or y coordinates, of the points in the middle of each subinterval as the heights of the rectangles. We have a height of 6, a height of 40, and a height of 49. And again, if we want to, we could factor out the 28. m sub 3 is equal to 28 times the sum of 6, 40, and 49, which is 2,660 which means using three subintervals and midpoints, the approximate distance would be 2,660 feet. I hope you found this helpful.